Okay, um, thanks everybody. Thank you, Alexander, for the introduction and for the invitation. For me, it's a great pleasure uh, being part of this incredible event and uh, uh, being, part, being the first speaker of this conference, uh, I thought it would be very interesting and useful to uh, make an overview on the uh, impact of the COVID on the Italian football industry. Um, as you can see, my, my speech will be divided into four uh, sections. The first one is the introduction. The second one, I want to make an, ally, uh, an analysis of the legal remedies for the Italian clubs facing the pandemic and uh, a view also of the legislative framework. Then I want to uh, focus on the contractual impact with regards to football players. And then with the conclusion, I want to make uh, um, a sort of uh, general uh, a general discussion about all these uh, these, uh, these elements and these situations. Okay, let's move in with the with the with the introduction. I want to start by uh, making an, a sort of uh, analysis of the current situation for the Serie A clubs. As you can see uh, in the the, the all the football matches all over uh, the Europe, uh, in this moment they are played without the supporters. If uh, this is a um, uh, Add news from the sporting point of view because uh, we uh, all know that um, the supporters are very important and part of the of the play itself. So it is a, a very critical situation for for the football clubs uh, from the economic point of view and for all other uh, for other elements that we are going to to to, to see. In particular, in particular. The most significant critical points uh, um, are the salary obligation towards players and employees that uh, um, needs to be paid by the football clubs, uh, even if uh, there are a uh, loss of a uh, lot of losses caused by the pandemic. We think about, as I mentioned before, the ticketing, the in-stadium corporate hospitality, the suspension or reduction of payment by the commercial partners and broadcasters, and the cancellation of risk uh, or rescheduling of events. Um, another critical point uh, is uh, uh, represented by the financial checks that uh, have been made uh, monthly by the FIGC, the Italian Football Association, and in particular by the COVISOC, that is a sort of department of the FIGC that is aimed uh, properly uh, to control the, the compliance of the contractual deadlines to the, the employees and the other clubs. And this is important because uh, um, if a club is not uh, compliant with this deadline, um, it can be infl inflicted by um, several sanctions. Uh, one of them are very important, uh, such as the uh, impossibility of uh, um, registration for, for the next uh, championship. Um, another point uh, is represented by the, cost, uh, the costly FIGC protocol with rigorous provisions, such as the testing programs, aimed at ensuring that matches can go ahead as planned. And the last but not least, the frequent unavailability of players due to infection in addition to the ordinary injuries. Well, uh, all this situation is important because uh, on one hand, the, the clubs are uh, um, pressed by, by the players uh, and they, with legitimate uh, request of payment uh, of the salaries because of they are playing. But uh, at the other hand, uh, the, um, the clubs are pressed also by the financial situation, the losses that uh, are caused by the pandemic uh, for the, the elements that I mentioned before. For example, the ticketing that is uh, um, something that is uh, very important, uh, is a very important loss in this moment uh, for, the, for the football clubs. But also uh, the requesting by the broadcasters and in particular by the commercial partners that are they are asking to reduce the fees that they were were agreed in the, in, in the contracts uh, one, uh, one year ago and uh, they are asking it because of uh, the fact that the uh, supporters are not in the stadium or uh, uh, also the, the, the general the general feeling of the competitions in this moment uh, is a little bit different uh, by the, 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 the past the past sporting seasons and uh, this is a problem because uh, um, for the clubs uh, uh, the, the question of uh, the, the economic question is uh, is very uh, is passing through an overwhelming period for the, for the football clubs. Okay, having said that, uh, um, all these points uh, uh, lead us to ask ourselves uh, the following question. Which have been uh, during the first wave, but also which are in this moment, the legal remedies for the Italian clubs um, to face the pandemic? 
uh, I think that uh, this current critical and serious situation uh, has caused the Syria collapse to question if and if so which uh, remedies are being suggested and provided by the Italian legal system to help restore the current imbalance in the contract of equilibrium. And we are going to see uh, all, exactly the legal remedies that are provided by the Italian legal system and we need to ask if for the clubs uh, these remedies are uh, fitting also for the, for the spotting clubs. I, I'm no, sorry. Um, I think also that uh, uh, another important uh, thing is uh, that on closer inspection, even if the Italian legal system does not provide, does not uh, contain the actual phrasing of force majeure, um, in other words, the acts of God, these are, there are two uh, legal remedies uh, in the Italian legal system that might be invoked to help address this contractual imbalance in use by the crisis. The first one is uh, uh, we can uh, mm, uh, think we can talk about a, a sort of supervening possibility. Uh, it's provided by different by several articles in the Italian Civil Code. There is a general principle uh, pushed on to Article One Two uh, Five Six Paragraph One. As a general principle, we can say that uh, uh, if uh, a, a performance uh, it became uh, impossible, um, the party cannot be considered as a liable party. This is a general principle. There is another kind of uh, supervening impossibility that is called uh, a temporary impossibility, push on to the, paragraphs, the second paragraph of the article 1256, uh, and uh, it allows the parties to fulfill um, entirely his obligation in a subsequent uh, moment. Uh, there is another, a third kind of supervening impossibility that is, uh, we can call it uh, as a, an absolute uh, uh, supervening impossibility in contracts involving reciprocal services or duties. In this case, the discharged party can't uh, pretend the services to be received. And um, in, in other words, it became absolutely impossible to honor the entire contractual obligation. And this is uh, uh, different by the, 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 the next uh, um, article, the article 1464 of the Italian Civil Code, that is called a partial impossibility, where the contractual obligation became only partially impossible. All these differences are important because uh, uh, during the first wave in particular it was disputed which kind of uh, legal remedies, which kind of also um, shade um, according to all these uh, articles uh, can be applied to the, to the, 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 current, uh, the current situation and the relationship with, uh, with the players. Uh, well, Having said that, uh, uh, I can make an example in order to make you understand uh, what a supervening impossibility is. Uh, I can think about uh, um, a professor of an elementary school that uh, cannot uh, go to work, cannot go to school because uh, um, the, the, the school has been closed by the measure for a sort of sanification. In this case, it is impossible for the, for, the, for the professor to go at work and he cannot be uh, considered as a liable party. This kind of example is important because it uh, leads us to uh, an, a very important concept of, uh, of this speech, that is uh, the factum principis. Uh, factum principis is an hypothesis of super possibilities. Um, what is a factum principis? A factum principis is uh, um, a legislative or administrative measure or decision issued at time also for a collective benefit which leads to the impossibility to meet contractual obligation regardless of desire. Well, um, another legal remedy that also is linked to the, fa to the factum principis concept uh, is the hardship. Uh, literally, pushed on to Article 1467 is a sort of uh, excessive supervening burden, okay? And the hardship may also arise out of an effective factum principis. Which are the applications? First of all, is a remedy to be applied in case of unforeseen contractual imbalance. Uh, also, in this case, uh, um, it applies in contracts involving recipro reciprocal services or duties. It has in those cases where there is a certain period of time between the signing and the execution of the contract. Uh, in fact, uh, in, according to the Italian legal system, um, services and a remuneration condition of uh, a contract uh, may be uh, affected if uh, external events occur within the time frame set for in the contract. Okay, to make another example, in to make you understand better this uh, legal remedy, 
we can think about a, a transport contract, okay? Uh, if I have agreed, uh, according to this contract, uh, um, a certain amount uh, for uh, transporting a, a thing, an important thing, by the point A to the point B, and it is impossible uh, due, to, for example, to an earthquake to reach uh, the point B uh, because the, the street collapse, uh, um, according to the new circumstances, uh, it, it is it became too expensive for me to reach the point B because, for example, the only way is uh, renting an helicopter. And this is uh, too expensive for me. The imbalance of the contract uh, uh, changed. And uh, this is important that the, 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 the Italian legal system, the Italian civil code provide for some remedies in order to restore this imbalance, okay? Well, having said that, uh, what we need also now to, to question is uh, uh, which are the contractual impact uh, of, of these uh, uh, pandemic events uh, regard, with regard to the players. Um, uh, we can say that uh, um, COVID outbreak led to a situation whereby agreements cannot be performed worldwide as the party originally anticipated. The obligation placed on the partially became um, at least partially impossible. Okay. In fact, uh, um, players and coaches have been unable to work and club have been unable to provide work okay, due to the fact of principles that we mentioned before. Okay, having said that, uh, what we need to ask is, uh, could the football clubs have based, but also now can base, the claims on the aforementioned legal institution in order to reduce wages or terminate contracts? In theory, yes. In theory, uh, in fact, the, the legal measure issued by the legislator during the first wave, for example, the lockdown, but also the suspension of the sporting activities, and uh, issued also by the sporting authorities uh, in line with, the, with the, the, the guidelines of the of the government, should have been considered by the by the judge as an hypothesis of partial supervening impossibility, push on to Article One Four Six Four and a hypothesis of extraordinary and unpredictable event pushed to Article 1467, leading to an hardship. But uh, some significant differences between the two provisions uh, need to be uh, mentioned. According to Article 1464, once one party's performance becomes partially impossible, I have underlined partially because we need to analyze uh, more specifically this, uh, this term, I was saying that once one party performance becomes partially impossible, the other party can ask for a reduction of the obligation, but also for a determination of the contract. But in the second option, this second option only in case of lack of interest. So in the case, we need to ask if the clubs uh, had the, 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 the interest of terminating the contract. And uh, it, it, it's not always like that, okay? Push on to Article 1467, the, 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 the application are uh, less than the other because uh, the party that is bearing the hardship, so literally the supervening excessive burden, could only ask for the termination of the contract. And only the non-fulfilling party, so in our, in our example, the players, can ask for the reduction of the contractual economic condition, but in a second moment, because uh, in front of the judge, I can claim, I can uh, file a claim only basing my claim um, uh, on the termination of the contract, pursuant to Article 1467. This is important because, as I was saying before, it was disputed by the, the club which kind of uh, art article uh, in case uh, would have been applied by the, by the, the clubs uh, in order to um, uh, ask the judge uh, or a reduction or a termination of it, or a reduction of the payment or a termination of the contract. As I mentioned before, it is important to underline partially impossible because uh, um, I have mentioned here the Article 1464 and not the Article 1463 that is, uh, if you remember, the, um, um, an absolute uh, impossibility. According to me, in this case, uh, during the first wave in particular, it is, was more um, fitting to speak about uh, a partial impossibility. And this is because the sporting activity needs to be considered as a, uh, in a broader sense, sense okay? Because uh, it is not only the, it's not strictly the, the activity of playing the, foot, the official football matches, okay? Uh, players, for example, during the first wave can, uh, also during the lockdown, uh, in some moments they can train themselves at home or at can uh, train themselves in the, in the sporting centers, okay? Or uh, to make another example, uh, the, the players uh, had a sort of um, 
um, authorities, uh, it was under the sort of authorities of the clubs uh, for what concerned um, the diet. For example, in some cases, uh, uh, some football clubs uh, delivered uh, specific diets to the players that uh, they need to uh, follow these uh, strict guidelines. And, but also, for example, for the training, uh, you remember, I think, uh, the, the, the training sessions uh, held by Jose Mourinho um, at home uh, towards the players of the Tottenham. And this was the same also for the Italian uh, football clubs. So according to me, it is uh, incorrect to speak about an absolute, um, an absolute uh, uh, impossibility during the first wave. It is better to speak about a partial impossibility. And this is why the, the possible uh, options were about a reduction of the obligation or a termination of the contract. Well, but um, having said that, uh, what have the club's evaluation been considered the limits provided for by the law and the regulations? First of all, we need to remember that players, uh, being em employees, uh, are considered as uh, the weaker party of the relationship, okay? Second thing is, uh, uh, in concrete, uh, no termination of the contracts uh, was considered uh, at all by, by clubs, but uh, in case uh, only a reduction of the salaries. Third, um, there were a risk of breaching the CBA, the collective bargaining agreements, agreements that provide for a minimum salary and request that any reduction of wage is allowed only in specific circumstances, for example, an excused absence or bad conduct. This is important because uh, in Italian, uh, and in, in particular in the sporting legal system, we have a sort of closed system where the sanctions can be imposed only for specific conduct. And the uh, uh, fact was, uh, it was disputed if uh, it was possible to uh, ask the judge something that was not uh, specifically provided by the, con the, the collective bargaining agreements. So a reduction or a termination uh, in, in, for a, a, an act of God, for a force majeure or something like that. It was not uh, um, uh, provided for by the, the contract, okay? Another point was the risk of discrimination or downgrading because we cannot consider it, um, players, uh, we cannot treat uh, some players in a way and other players in another way. I, I'm speaking uh, about a, a single club, okay? Uh, the, the, all the, the, the arguments, all the, the, the agreements uh, needed to be uh, signed uh, in a general way, okay? Uh, considering all the players. And this was uh, a risk uh, for, the, for, the, for the clubs to uh, speak uh, for, for example, the most important players in a way and other players in another way. We need to find uh, a common uh, line, okay? Uh, the other point is the risk of damaging, damaging the relationship with the players that, uh, you know, during the first wave we were in a very delicate period, uh, the sporting season were fin was finishing and uh, it is difficult, it's delicate to speak uh, with the players uh, when you need to uh, fight to in order to uh, avoid the relegation, it is difficult to speak about the reduction of the payments or uh, termination of the contract because the, the squad that the, the club needs to be needs to maintain to to keep on going uh, uh, united okay last but not least the impossibility of any reduction in payment without filing a petition before a panel as i was saying before um, uh, any kind of uh, reduction of the payment uh, any uh, obviously any termination any hypothesis of termination of the contract needs to be um, uh, cannot be thought without considering a filing before a panel, a sporting panel that uh, will decide on it. So this is important because it's something that is a decision that cannot be uh, taken by the club uh, without uh, um, asking a, a judge something like this. Okay. Okay, having said that, the most prudent outcome has been to find an amicable solution with players in order to mutually agree a reduction of the annual salaries and save money. This has been at first, at the very first beginning of the first wave, um, difficult because of the dialogues that were, were held by the legacy Serie A um, the clubs and the, the Italian Football Association because um, on one hand, uh, on 6 April, the, the Serie A clubs decided to um, uh, sign a sort of guideline, a sort of proto internal protocol, uh, where it was decided that in case of uh, uh, no restarting of sporting seasons, um, they um, could have uh, applied a reduction of the, of, the, of the wages of four monthly pays. In case of a restarting of the, of the, 
of the sporting season, the reduction would have been only uh, two monthly pay. But these uh, uh, have been considered by the Italian Football Association to hide as a request. So it was impossible to find an agreement between the two categories. And uh, that's why the only outcome uh, have been to find uh, individually agreements with each players. Okay. Um, the agreements uh, uh, were being signed uh, um, in almost cases for one monthly salaries, not more. Um, it has been uh, very important to save money in this uh, in this way, but uh, I think it it, uh, it was not sufficient because uh, in this moment we are uh, facing uh, um, the terrible consequences of the losses that uh, I mentioned before and. Uh, the, the the salary the salary of the players are one of the most important uh, um, elements for for uh, economic uh, um, point of view of the of the clubs uh, even um, in, in 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 England and in the Premier League for example you know that uh, the clubs can uh, um, can count of different uh, elements for example merchandising ticketing uh, and also the broadcasting rights uh, are very um, very um, useful from from the from from the, for the for the clubs in Italy we have a different situation where almost everything is uh, governed by the the broadcasting rights uh, something about the ticketing but it depends and so you know that uh, we have not so many uh, voices we have not so many elements uh, in order to um, to um, avoid to to contrast to face uh, uh, some uh, the, the pandemic in, like or, or elements like this or events like this the, the last point uh, it was the mandatory ratification by the union so another step another um, dialogue with other uh, categories that of course are uh, in the interest of the players so it was a very difficult um, a very difficult uh, um, situation Okay. After all, uh, this approach uh, um, was at the basis of the FIFA's wishes. Okay, in a, in a very important uh, document that is called the Football Regulatory Issues, the FIFA um, you can you can see strongly encouraged to, uh, clubs and employees to work together to find appropriate collective agreements in order to amend, in order to um, uh, reduce maybe the employment condition uh, both for the interest of course of the players but also for the for the for the clubs in order to uh, face the covid outbreak okay let's moving on to the conclusions i think that uh, uh, it has been very interesting from a, from a legal point of view to face in the first person all these uh, the situation and uh, apply in concrete uh, all the, the things that uh, I have studied in the university books uh, when we uh, talked about uh, the pandemic as an uh, act of force majeure or acts of God. But from a human point of view, uh, it has been a, a very uh, difficult, a very overwhelming period uh, because I, I understood that uh, even if uh, uh, football clubs, even if uh, the, 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 club, the, the football in general, the Italian football, that is one of the richest uh, entities of the, of the Italian uh, uh, framework. Uh, um, the, the, the clubs are made by by people. The clubs are made by um, yes, of course, players, but also several several people inside the clubs. But also the supporters is a very huge word. And I think that uh, in this situation where clubs are uh, pressuring politicians and sporting institutions in order to find a common outcome, all people, the the, the, the entities need to play their role from the citizens uh, to the government, passing to through the sporting institution, clubs, association, unions, players, and so on. We need to play as one team. We need everyone needs to play their role uh, in order to understand that this is a, a, a terrifying situation. And uh, even uh, this is a problem. Uh, if this is a problem for the Italian cl uh, Serie A clubs that are richer than the others, of course, uh, you can imagine, even imagine how it is important for the, for the minor leagues and the amateur sports to um, understand that uh, um, a sacrifice needs to be um, taken by everyone in order to face the COVID outbreak as the, uh, a common enemy. <laughs>